Okay, so I just submitted a uh, abstract for a space medicine presentation um, that I'm hoping to present my research at. And it's very similar to the other uh, presentations I gave this last summer, the one at the military medical conference that I won my award for, um, and then also the one at my local medical uh, college conference. So um, I haven't really been very uh, <laughs> transparent about my own research for a lot of reasons, uh, but I'm putting together this presentation so I'll walk you through big picture kind of stuff uh, real quick and simple. Uh, so successful CRISPR edits. Um, when we edit cells with CRISPR, typically they cause P53 mutations. Uh, P53 is the cell or is the uh, protein that's kind of like the emergency break for cell division. If something goes wrong, uh, too wrong with your cell during uh, the replication cycle, um, it does not uh, divide. And so it does not uh, carry on that that error. It, it stops the cell division and tries to repair it. And if it can't even do that, then it will kill itself. All right, that's apoptosis. So when you edit with CRISPR, uh, it selects typically four P53 mutated cells already uh, because those cells can get past this kind of thing. And uh, that means that many cells that are treated with CRISPR or edited by CRISPR-Cas9 uh, are actually tumorgenic, um, meaning that they can actually cause tumors and cancer. So that's not good. That's not good for the population of patients I'm targeting, which are astronauts, cancer patients, and warfighters. And I would also throw in um, uh, autoimmune patients in this as well, since they undergo very similar uh, treatments as cancer patients. But... Um, so if you're, you know, for astronauts, uh, it's we're in order to explore deep space. There's just no way we're getting around uh, not editing their genomes. And so uh, if we tried using CRISPR-Cas9 to make edits that we want, we might introduce cells that are already, um, uh, you know, fragile, and then send them into an environment full of oxidative stress and radiation poisoning. So. Uh, not a good recipe for success. Cancer patients and, like I said, immunodeficient patients are uh, similar in this way because uh, they undergo radiation treatment, they undergo uh, chemotherapy, um, they undergo, uh, well, their bodies already are tumorgenic in many cases. Um, and so we don't want to equip them with cells, edited cells, even if they might help their immune system fight the cancers or even... Uh, the immune system fight itself, uh, we don't want to, you know, set them up for failure with uh, broken cells, right? And then war fighters, uh, as you can imagine, are under um, high levels of stress, um, both physically, but also uh, biologically speaking, you know, actual attacks against their <laughs> biology via, you know, bio warfare, chemical warfare, and of the like. Um, not to mention, yes, the physical stress that they're under. So um, suppression, the data shows from many different research studies, um, uh, this is one that I'm adding to my you know list, but suppression of uh, TP53, which is the gene for the P53 protein, decreases the likelihood of, um, of this, of this uh, sort of... Um, fragile, already fragile cell. So basically that's to say that uh, when we edit cells um, with CRISPR-Cas9, but we momentarily turn off their P53 gene, um, then uh, this is okay. This is uh, uh, more uh, unlikely to give us cells that have this P53 mutation on the other end. Um, that's okay. That's like an eh, um, kind of uh, result. I don't like that result. Um, I don't trust that result in uh, patient populations like the ones I'm talking about. Um, it's great for inside of a Petri dish and it's questionable inside of an actual human being. So proposal uh, that my team has put together is what if you could controllably suppress during the editing phase and big and uh, express extra copies of P53 in environments of high oxidative stress. So not only, so actually a little 
background, humans only get two copies of P53, while you know things like elephants get 20 copies. Um, and it seems, all the data would suggest, that it seems that having extra copies is uh, muy bueno, very good. So um, giving cells extra copies in many uh, tests have shown that they are more resilient uh, to all sorts of problems, uh, reactive oxygen uh, or high oxidative stress. So what if we could give that to these populations? What if not only could we edit their cells in a safer way, um, but also give them backup uh, <laughs> stabilization, extra strength, if you will, extra strength P53 uh, in environments that they would really need it. Do I think everyone should have that? Probably not. Um, there's probably something to be said about uh, the balance of P53 and genome stability and instability, um, especially in immune cells, which is what we would be targeting. Uh, but when you have specific populations, say like astronauts who are literally being bombarded by cosmic radiation every second of every minute of every day that they're in space, um, you might want some extra oomph to their genome. So that's where our synthetic chromosome comes in. Um, and my team, you know, we actually showed that not only do we have a synthetic chromosome capable of um, uh, programming, but I did in fact program extra copies of P53 onto it. So uh, let's see, that is right here. Some of my data just proving the plasmid. This is the P53 gene, some mutations. That's um, nothing you need to really think about. Um, and then me proving that on the other side, my cells did have P53. And not only did they have P53, but I was able to turn on the P53 at will. So the, not only can we, uh, not only can we install a synthetic chromosome into uh, a human cell, uh, and not only can that human chromosome then have extra copies of whatever gene you want, and we can go down many rabbit holes about other capabilities, but also um, I can turn whatever those genes that you install into the synthetic chromosome on and off, right? So um, that is the big uh, huzzah moment. And it means that, you know, effectively we could create a custom and like uh, designer sort of chromosomes for these populations in their environments that might help. There are um, uh, inducible uh, genetic circuits that turn on in response to radiation. Uh, there are inducible uh, circuits, you know, that you could turn on during just their chemo um, treatments. You know, same with warfighters, you can imagine a situation. So yeah, that's my research in a nutshell. Um, I, I guess that's my presentation. Maybe I should just send that in.